Hello, and welcome to my Super Mario Bros. movie discussion! <laughs> I guess that's what this is now, but uh, yeah, so I just saw the Super Mario Bros. movie, uh, came out today, and I just want to kind of go over it about what I liked, what I didn't like, and just kind of talk about the movie. So before I begin, just want to put it out there that there will be spoilers in this discussion, so uh, if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to see it spoiler-free, I would recommend waiting to watch this in, until you see the movie, and that way you can be spoiler-free, and yeah, so just that little heads up. But we'll get to the major spoilers later on in the video, so if you want to watch for a little bit without being like completely spoiled, like I'm sure that would also be fine. I I I'll have like a little warning when we get to knee-deep spoiler stuff, so, uh, yeah, let's get into this. So, yes, Super Mario Bros. movie. Um, before I go into the little details and, like, picking apart all the scenes and whatever, I just want to talk about, overall, what I thought about it. Easy, easy, 9 out of 10. That's kind of what I'm giving it. I mean, I want to see it a second time before I give it a definitive review, but... Just first time watching it just now, easy 9 out of 10. It was incredible. I mean, the amount of references and Easter eggs were just plentiful, and it was amazing, and I couldn't recommend it more. But, yeah, so, I mean, if you're even just a little bit of a fan of Super Mario, definitely go check it out. It was definitely worth it, and I had a really good time. And, I mean, it, it was just great, like... Especially if you're, like, really into Mario, you definitely want to see this. I mean, you're probably going to see it anyway, but definitely check it out, because it was amazing. Just as a movie, as a Mario movie, it just, like, is everything. It was amazing. So, now that we've got that out of the way, um, let's kind of go over all of the scenes, kind of talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and all that stuff. So, first scene of the movie was, um... Pretty similar to the first trailer, if you can remember back that far. I know it's been like six months since that first came out, but uh, um, yeah, so it was pretty much just the fight against Bowser and the Koopas versus the Penguins, and it was pretty identical to the original trailer, so if you've seen that, you've kind of seen the first scene in the movie, so it was a little different. A few of the lines were different. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much the same, so, I mean, and that's what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting it to be too much more than what we saw originally, so, yeah. And I really liked that scene, um, I mean, it was funny, I mean, it was a great way to start off the movie. I, I kind of like that we saw Bowser first before we saw Mario. I kind of like when movies show you the villain before the hero, because it's sort of, um, I don't know, it kind of gives off that, um, whole oh, there's a problem, but who's going to save the day kind of mentality. And I, I kind of like it like that better, just just uh, for movies in general. So I was glad that this movie did that. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that scene was pretty much what you expect. Um, you know, Bowser gets the superstar. Uh, why the penguins have it, I have no idea. I mean, um, pretty much that's the only superstar in the movie, so... I have no clue why the penguins had it. Um, that was never explained, so I don't know. There were quite a few things that were left unexplained, um, so yeah. And, um, well, um, gosh. I mean, that, that was pretty much it for that scene that I really have to complain about. Everything else was pretty much what you'd expect, so yeah. Anyway, the next scene in the movie was... Um, gosh, oh, it was the Super Mario Bros. commercial, that's what it was. And we already knew about this too, but I believe it was a couple months ago that this was first shown off, but man, just seeing it in the movie theater, oh, so good! It was, so, for those that don't know, it was the song that plays um, from the Super Mario Bros. Super Show from the 80s, like, oh my gosh. Never in a million years would I have expected them to bring back some song from a show that is really obscure. And, oh my gosh, it was amazing. Like, 
they, they had the commercial, and, you know, they show them with the capes, and it's like, oh my gosh, I, I loved it so much. It it was great. Loved it. And, yeah. Definitely one of the best parts of the movie. Like, I knew going into it that I was really going to enjoy that part. Even though we'd already, I'd already watched it, like, a million times. I was just like, this is going to be good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so after that, um, we kind of see Mario and Luigi um, in what they called Punch Out Diner, which it was it was Punch Out themed, which was amazing. I did not think that they were gonna go. I like I knew they were gonna have a lot of Easter eggs and references, but there there was a whole diner that was themed around Punch Out, and I loved it. And like you could see all the character portraits hanging on the wall, and like you could see Little Mac and everyone, and it it was great. I really enjoyed that, and oh my gosh. Like, I didn't expect them to go that hard on Easter eggs, so that was pretty cool. Um, this was also the scene where we're first introduced to Four Man Spike. Um, interestingly enough, we, we knew he was going to be in the movie since the beginning, pretty much, but we hadn't seen him basically until now. Like, I don't think he was in any of the trailers from what I saw. So, yeah, it was pretty exciting to see him for the first time. And um, he wasn't in the movie that much, which is a little sad. I kind of hope to see more for him since he's such an obscure character but yeah i really did uh like his time on screen he's kind of like a bully towards mario and luigi and i i kind of like that like i mean that was kind of what i was expecting going into this but yeah kind of was uh, making fun of them and kind of like um showing that mario and luigi well, they're not cool in brooklyn like come on they're, they're they're plumbers there aren't any cool plumbers in brooklyn but, uh, yeah, so that happened, and um, I thought that they did a really good job with him. And so also in the beginning, um, we see Mario and Luigi going to uh, um, fix um, somebody's uh, clogged sink, I believe it was. And um, there was a whole scene where uh, the, the family dog was attacking them, and... The, and they ended up breaking the bathroom. It was just like Mario shenanigans you'd expect from a... Uh, well, it was just like general movie shenanigans, honestly. I mean, it's Illumination. You can kind of uh, expect things to start off that way. But uh, yeah, so um, they're, they're supposed to fix the leaky pipe and the dog starts attacking them and everything just kind of goes to chaos like like you'd expect. But uh, yeah, that, that part of the movie was fun. Um I honestly thought that that would be the part where they get sucked down the drain. It was kind of a fake out, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, so that happens, and you know, they you kind of see how they're struggling as plumbers, and you know, it's interesting to see. So then, next scene. Oh boy, there was. Um, I'm okay. So this is kind of spoiler territory. So. Um, just a little heads up for this next part, but um, we got to see Mario and Luigi's entire family. Like, they have a family now. What? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! Like, uh, Mario was a dad and a mom, and uh, there was like an uncle, and I, I, they didn't really explain who everyone was. Like, they kind of just said, "Oh, there's a mom and a dad," but there's also like a lot of other uh, people that were with them, and um, probably like uncles or whatever and you know it was just really fun seeing like other mario characters that weren't mario and luigi i i thought that was really great like it was so left field and i i loved it it was it was amazing and you know it, it was just fun seeing um other people that look like mario and luigi but weren't them and you know it was just kind of fun like seeing that and like they've never really had like canon parents before like obviously we have Yoshi's Island and stuff but we don't really ever see them in those games so it was kind of cool to like be introduced to them for the first time you know so that was definitely really cool and um oh and there was also a scene uh, around this time where we see Mario and Luigi in their bedroom and Mario was playing Kid Icarus like the original NES game Kid Icarus on an NES and I was just like Okay, first you get Punch-Out references, and now Kid Icarus, wow, they they are really going hard on these Easter rigs, and it's right around Easter, too, so... <laughs> but, 
But uh, yeah, that that happened, and uh, <laughs> it was pretty cool to see that. Wasn't expecting that at all, and. Like, even if you just look in the background of their room, like, you could see uh, posters for F-Zero, and I think I saw one for Ice Climbers. It was just, like, all these old Nintendo posters. I was just like, oh my gosh! Like, that's so cool! And, yeah. So, that happened. And I believe that was also the scene where we see Pauline. Pauline was only in this one scene, but we see her on TV, and, like... Apparently there's like a plumbing disaster in downtown Brooklyn or whatever, and Pauline's on TV, and um, so Mario and Luigi decide to go down there and save the day because they want to be heroes and yada yada yada. But they end up getting sucked down the drain and they fall in the sewer, and <laughs> yeah. So this part was definitely a lot like um, the original 1993 Mario Brothers movie, like. I, I recently saw that, like, maybe not recently, but maybe, like, a year ago I saw it for the first time. And, yeah, that movie wasn't great. But, let me just say, there were a lot of parallels between the new movie and that one. Like, there were a lot of times where I'm just like, oh, that's cool. That's kind of like how it was in the original movie. I'm like, oh, yeah, like... That in the original movie, they fall down the sewer, and they break a wall, and all of a sudden, they get sucked into a pipe, and they're in the Mushroom Kingdom. And, like, that was pretty much how it worked uh, this time around. So, yeah, it was kind of exciting to see that happen. And, I mean, not a whole lot to say about that, you know. But, uh, anyway, they find the warp pipe underground. They get sucked inside. But, wouldn't you know, they get separated in the journey... And Luigi ends up going to the Badlands, and Mario ends up in, like, the uh, middle of the Mushroom Kingdom. So, they're separated, and that kind of is the one of the main plots of the movie. It's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta find Luigi! let us go <laughs> let us go <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so they get separated, and Mario, upon arriving in the Mushroom Kingdom, runs into Toad, or... A toad, because there's like a million toads in this movie. Uh, there weren't any Paper Mario references in the movie, as far as I could tell, but if there was one, it was the fact that there were a lot of toads. Lots and lots and lots of toads. But honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal, because there were other characters in the movie, like in that same scene, you see like a uh, what are they, like, the Bramballs, the... I don't know, I think they're Bramballs, uh, pardon my French, but, uh... Yeah, I believe that's what they're called, and there were bitty bugs walking around, so it's not like they were the only characters that lived in the Mushroom Kingdom, but at the same time... <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I would have liked to see more, um, Paper Mario characters or whatever, like, obviously I wasn't expecting that, because that would be really cool and uh you know sometimes nintendo doesn't do cool things but <laughs> yeah um anyway so um mario explains his dilemma to toad and they decide to go see princess peach in the mushroom kingdom so there's this whole montage of uh mario and toad running through uh toad town and um kind of uh showing off like all the toads and like what life is like for them and it was fun like because there were a lot of little easter eggs in this scene alone um like you'll see like a antique shop selling uh power-ups and uh there was a toad buying like a nes cartridge and uh the one toad's like oh yeah you just gotta blow into it and I'm like yes yes you do <laughs> but uh yeah so that part was really fun it was kind of fun just seeing uh um, just how wacky the whole Toad Town is, and, like, they, they, I think Mario even made a comment where it was just like, oh, these blocks are just floating here. Oh, okay, because, like, obviously, in, like, every Mario game, there's floating, uh, question mark blocks and brick blocks, and it's like, yeah, they, 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 they never really explain that, um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, like, it, it's so iconic, like, there's really no explaining it at this point. It, it's just it's just there. But uh, yeah, so um, also around this time, we kind of see what happens to Luigi. Um, he um, 
ends up in the Badlands and ends up getting chased by a bunch of dry bones. And, uh, you know, at first he's scared and running from them, but then, uh, you know, he uh, is able to defeat one and, uh, you know, everything's good, everything's uh, peachy, and, you know, he says a line, You got Luigi! <laughs> I, I love that line, that might be my favorite line from the whole movie, but, uh, yeah, that that part was great. And um, But then, like, a million dry bones show up and uh, start... Uh, you know, they start uh, chasing him, so that happens, and um, he finds refuge in, like, an abandoned castle, which was kind of neat, but uh, there was kind of a jump scare with a bunch of shy guys and uh, sniffets in the castle, or, uh, like, it's all dark, and then, like, the lightning strikes, you could see them all standing behind him, and, you know, it, it was like, it was like the jump scare for the movie. Every movie has to have a jump scare. I mean, if you don't have a jump scare in your movie, what are you doing? But, uh, yeah, so that happened. And um, meanwhile, Mario uh, and Toad... Um, oh, so uh, Mario gets into the castle, and, uh, of course, the, the Toads at the gate are like, oh, our princess is in another castle. Of, of course, they, they had to make that joke because... I mean, that joke's been around for, what, like, 35-plus years at this point, so, I mean, it, they, they had to put that in the movie, but, uh, yeah, that was that was great. And, um, um, this is the part where we kind of meet Peach for the first time, and, um, really love how they did her character. She, they, um, they definitely, uh, this is another thing that really, uh, I thought was interesting, like, um, never did she ever get kidnapped. She was always, like, on the front lines fighting alongside Mario, like, it was never, like, trying to rescue Peach, it was just, like, trying to, uh, fight alongside her, which I thought was really cool. I really am glad that they went with that approach rather than just, like, oh, Peach got kidnapped again, let's, let's go again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, really glad they took that approach. And, um, you know, I, like, right along, or right um, at the beginning, you can tell that Mario and Peach get along really well. They have a really good dynamic together, and that was a lot of fun. And, um, so, um, basically, Peach agrees to take Mario to see, um, the, um, I believe it was called the Khan Tribe, or the Khan Kingdom, basically where all the, the Donkey Kongs of the universe live, and, um, Basically, all the Toads and Peach, they know that Bowser's coming to attack, and they are going to uh, the Khan Kingdom to um, team up with the monkeys to uh, basically defeat Bowser. And um, Peach agrees to take Mario only if he can complete the Mario obstacle course, which they have a huge obstacle course that is um, just like, you know, all the moving platforms and uh, the piranha plants and everything. And there's like a whole training montage where... Um, um, you see Mario, like, going through it and continuously failing, and, um, you know, that, that part's really fun. I mean, they played I Need a Hero during that part. I mean, like, it, it, was, it was pretty great. And so, you know, there's a whole montage of him training and learning about uh, all the different things in the Mushroom Kingdom. And um, after that, yeah, um, Mario, Peach, and Toad, they all uh, decide to embark on a journey to go to... Uh, the um, Khan Kingdom, and then there's like another little montage of them like going through all the iconic Mario locations. Like they went through the Bomb Battlefield, they went through Toast Arena from Super Mario Odyssey. Like it was really cool seeing them go through all these iconic Mario locations. I do wish they spent a little bit more time uh, in those locations. Like it was just like a brief, oh, here they are, and then like cuts to the next scene, and it was like, oh, that that's too bad. I was really hoping that we get like a whole scene in Baba Battlefield, but I I'm glad that it was at least in the movie. Like, it, it looked really nice, and I I'm pretty uh, satisfied with at least them showing it. So that was cool. And um, yeah, um, let's see. So they make it to the Khan Kingdom, and um, Mario and Peach and Toad, they all get to like experience the Khan Kingdom by riding in a Mario Kart, and there's, uh, there's a Khan in the sports coat driving them, and he, he was pretty cool, and uh, I wish he had a name, like Sports Coat Khan or something, I don't know, they didn't really give him a name, but he was cool, and uh, 
basically they they ride through the whole uh donkey kong country-esque style town um in a mario kart which is really cool and apparently fun fact uh, all the mario karts are built by the kongs which i have it just works okay i i don't know how to explain that but they live in a world where all their cars are built by monkeys and i am completely fine with that <laughs> but yeah so that happens and Basically, the three of them get in front of Cranky Con, who is, like, the king. Uh, they don't call him King Cranky Con, they just call him Cranky Con, which I think is funny. And, I mean, he wasn't even that cranky. Like, normally, uh, the Cranky Con in the games is, like, kind of always a jerk and, like, belittling the player and Donkey Con. Which, like, I, I was kind of expecting it to be the same, but honestly, he wasn't that mean. Like, he was, like, kind of cranky, but... He wasn't as cranky as he usually is, which I thought was interesting. But, um, yes, aside from that... Um, also, one, one other thing I want to point out, that... I'm not... I'm pretty sure that in the games... I'm not sure if this was canon or not, but I, I could have sworn that back in, like, Donkey Kong 64, Cranky Con was, um... Donkey Kong's grandpa? Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm 99% sure that's what it was. But in this, in the movie, um, they kind of treated him as, like, his son, which I thought was interesting. So, rip to Donkey Kong Jr., I guess. But, uh, yeah, so that happened. And um, so, basically, Mario gets an agreement where he has to fight Donkey Kong. And if he wins, then uh, Peach can use the whole Con army to fight Bowser, which um, was pretty cool. And honestly, I think the Donkey Kong fight scene was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. It was really well done. I really liked it. Um, first of all, they played they played the DK rap. Okay. okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. I, I, I was, that was the one part of the movie that I was spoiled beforehand. Like, I looked online and i'm like oh okay it was like i was already in the theater i looked at my phone it's like oh dk raps in the movie cool but then when i heard it it was so magical like it, oh my gosh it was <laughs> it was a dk rap <laughs> <laughs> that that part i i literally had my face like <laughs> but yeah that part was pretty amazing like like, you just think, like, oh, that's pretty cool, it's in the movie, and then, like, you actually hear it, you're just like... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, uh, that was pretty amazing. That was definitely one of the best parts of the movie for me. I, I just loved hearing it. Um, too bad, uh, Grant Kirkhope, the guy that wrote the song, didn't get credited for it, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, that's unfortunate, but, uh, Anyways, the whole Donkey Kong fight scene was amazing. Like, um, you know, you see Mario getting beat up at first, and um, it was funny. They they showed him getting power ups at first. He gets the mini mushroom. I did not think they were gonna put the mini mushroom in there. They did, and it was amazing because um, obviously everyone hates that power up, and it is never good. And it was just funny that they were like kind of making fun of it. They're like, oh. He got the mini mushroom. Ha ha, what a, what a loser. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that part was great. Oh, oh, yes. Another, another thing that was really cool about this before. Um, Diddy Kong was in the movie. He had like one line where he like wouldn't shut up. He was still saying DK rap after it ended. And, and Cranky's just like, shut up, shut the hell up, Diddy. And he's like, oh, sorry. That, that part made me so... That part made me so happy. I was glad that Diddy had a line. Like... I, lo I love Diddy. And also, Chunky Con was there. Freaking Chunky Con was in the movie. Like, we already knew he was going to be in the movie because the trailers and whatever, but... <sighs> he he's part of the cinematic universe now. Like, he he's he's in the movie. Like, that's insane. Oh my gosh. Chunky Con, of all people, is in the movie. <sighs> now we just gotta... We just gotta get him back in a Donkey Kong game now. But yeah, that, that was pretty amazing. But anyway, back to the fight scene. Um... You know, you see Mario getting relentlessly beat by uh, Donkey Kong, like, and like he's just getting pulverized, like absolutely brutally beaten up, and it it, it is uh, that was like the world's weakest burp. Wow, but 
uh, yeah, it, it's pretty brutal. But then, of course, uh, Mari gets uh, the cat power up uh, and starts going all crazy like he uses cat reflexes cat reflexes to uh, kind of uh, uh, dodge all Donkey Kong's attacks, and it is pretty amazing, and I, I love that part. Like, I wasn't expect like, Cat Mario is like, it's... it's it's one of the more iconic power-ups, but it's still one of the newer power-ups, so I wasn't sure, like, um, how, like, if they would have, like, newer power-ups in there, but obviously then we saw in the trailer, I was like, oh, okay. And th- that that part was really fun, so it was, it was cool to see that, and w- eventually, uh, Mario ends up winning the fight, and, um, um, the Mario gang, uh, they win the con army, so, yay, we can take on Bowser now, yay! <laughs> so, um, you can see that Mario and Donkey Kong are kind of, uh, salty, like, they, they, like, almost get in a fight, like, a- after, like, the fight's over, and like, they're, like, arguing together, and, uh, there are a little bit, uh, still, uh, uh, rivals, kind of akin to, like, I don't know, like, uh, Sonic and Knuckles, almost, but, uh, yeah, so, it's kind of like that, and, um, so the next scene is, like, Mario and Peach and Toad, and all the cons getting in their carts, which obviously, uh, like I said, the cons make all the Mario carts, so that's pretty cool. And like they showed like um, them picking out which car they wanted. It was like the selection screen from Mario Kart 8, and played all the little sound effects. And I was like, oh, that, that's that's really clever. That's really clever. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And um, let's see. They make their Mario Karts, and it is pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, and, um, you know, Cranky gets a car, Donkey Kong gets a car, and they're all driving their cars, and before long, you know, they're, they're driving along, and they jump on a Rainbow Road, because, of course, you just had to put Rainbow Road in the movie. I mean, if you're gonna have Mario Karts in the movie, gotta have Rainbow Road. I mean, you just got to, which was amazing, but wouldn't you know it? Um, meanwhile, while all this is happening, um, Luigi gets captured by Bowser, and, um, you know, also, well, let's segue into Bowser a little bit. I haven't really talked much about Bowser. So, very interesting what they did with him. So, he didn't want to connect Peach this time around. Instead, they went for a more Mario Odyssey-esque approach, where, um... He was more into uh, marrying her rather than kidnapping her, which was something I was not expecting. Like, I did not think that they were ever going to bring up that storyline again, but, I mean, it worked better than I thought it was. Like, at first, when they first were dropping hints of him, like, wanting to marry her, I'm like, oh, oh, that's weird. But then, like, it started to make more sense, like, as the movie progressed. So, I was pretty uh, happy with that. And, um... I believe there was the, that same scene where he uh, um, uh, was like admitting that he wanted to marry Peach. Like that part was actually really interesting because uh, they they were actually playing uh, a song from Bowser's Fury. Aside from the DK rap, that was like the only song that was ripped right from uh, like an actual Mario game. Like all the other songs were either like actual music or like remixes, but this is like. Besides the DK rep, this is like the one song that was ripped right from a Mario game. Um, I don't remember which song it was exactly. It was the Fury Bowser theme, I think. And that 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 part threw me off guard. I'm like, oh, that's from the game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that part was fun. And you know, he Bowser kind of admitted to wanting to marry Peach. I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah. But uh, it, it worked out pretty well. Um, from a story perspective, and I, 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 I kind of like that idea. It, it was new, it was refreshing. It, I mean, it wasn't new, but it was refreshing to see something that wasn't basically the same as always, so that was nice. But um, Luigi gets captured by Bowser around this time, and um, you can kind of see that Mar- or Bowser is really jealous of Mario. He, he really has a thing for Peach, and as soon as he finds out that Peach is hanging around some plumber boy from Brooklyn, oh man, is he pissed. So, he starts to, like, get really jealous of Mario, and, um, he's able to coax out of Luigi, like, that, uh, where they are, or I believe that's how it went down, but Bowser finds out where they are, and, um, so he sends Luigi to the dungeon, and 
Um, so Luigi's in the dungeon, and um, he's uh, in there with like like Goombas and Koopa Troopas that I guess were traitors to Bowser. I, I mean, I I guess that uh, if you're a Goomba, you can betray Bowser or something. I don't know, but uh, uh, the penguins from the first scene are in there, the the king and all that. And interestingly enough, there is a Luma in there. Uh, Lumily, I believe, was his name. Now. Honestly, ever since we knew that this Luma was going to be in the movie, I thought that there was going to be some sort of hint of a Mario Galaxy sequel. There wasn't. Which sucks. But, uh, I mean, it it was still cool to have uh, a Luma in the movie. Like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't have expected them to do that. Like, and he was in the movie quite a bit. Quite a bit. Like, it wasn't like he was in one scene, and... He was uh, in the movie like for a couple of scenes, and he had quite a bit of lines, so I was pretty happy to see a Luma get a lot of attention. I mean, he got a Happy Meal toy, so I mean, he better have some lines, but yeah. And um, I love the way he was written, too, how he's just like, Oh, I have this really high-pitched cute like, little kid voice, and I, I talk about death and, and wanting to die so much. And, oh my gosh. Like, like... If you've seen the trailers, you probably already know what I'm talking about. You can kind of tell, like, how this character was written, but... Like, not at all like the Lumas from the game. Like, the Lumas from the game are like, Feed me! I'm hungry! Oh, yay! And then, like, this one's like, Ah! I want the sweet relief of death to wash over me! Yeah! Ha ha ha! It's like, oh! Okay! He's a cold-blooded killer, okay! But, uh, yeah. That, that, that was pretty enjoyable that they, uh wrote him like that and yeah that that honestly I think that's better than how the Lumas act in the game so I'm all for it so yeah and um so yeah and uh, let's see what else okay so Bowser knows that uh um the cons and Peach have teamed up so obviously he's pretty mad so he sends all the Koopa Troopas out to get uh um everybody and um this all happens during the rainbow road part where oh yay we're on rainbow road uh oh all the koopas are coming and this kind of starts off a huge like mario kart-esque fight scene where like uh they're throwing shells around and uh like the the bull bills are flying and it's like oh so good and I, i i really liked it but uh yeah it was pretty great but, uh, yeah, so that part was really good. Um, not much to say other than it was just a really cool scene. It was really good animation at this part. It was very fast-paced, and I love that um, there was one character... There was there was one Koopa who was supposed to represent the blue shell. He had a the blue spiny shell on his back, and uh, you could see he was, like, higher up the ranks. Like, he was talking to Bowser and, like speaking for all of the other Koopa Troopas, so you could tell, like, he was more important than all the rest. And, um, like, during the scene, he was chasing Mario the most and, like, trying to... He had, like, this really cool cart that was, like, uh, had, like, a metal mouth and was trying to eat Mario. Was, oh, so good. It was, I don't think it was a reference to anything, but, oh, so good. But anyway, um, after his car blows up, he, like, turns into a literal blue shell and starts going after everybody and um mario and donkey kong end up getting blown off the road and they fall into the water and um peach and toad get away and the rest of the cons are captured by the koopas and um that, that's pretty much how that goes down so definitely a really good uh, little fight scene um didn't really like mario kart at all they they wrote i mean Honestly, like, it, it was probably better than Mario Kart, but, yeah, that, that scene was really enjoyable. I really loved it, and, um, yeah, so, um, Peach Toad get away. They go back to the, uh, Mushroom Kingdom to warn all the Toads and tell them to evacuate and everything. So that happens, um, and Mario and Donkey Kong, on the other hand, they fall into the water, and, um, at first, um, Donkey Kong's, like, about to drown, but, oh, Mario saves him because he's such a nice guy, even though they're kind of rivals still. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, Mario saves Donkey Kong, but wouldn't you know it, they both get eaten by a giant Yunagi because, because, yes, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so, basically, 
Um, they're stuck inside this huge Unagi, and, you know, it uh, gives them a chance to uh, bond and, like, repair their broken friendship. Like, they uh, talk a bit about how they think they're both failures, and, um, and then um, they kind of, like, make up for all their differences and uh, kind of agree to team up and work together. So that, that was kind of a nice little scene. And uh, meanwhile, Peach gets... She kind of um, gives him the Bowser because he goes to the Mushroom Kingdom and kind of captures her. And he's like, oh, I, I want to marry you. And of course, Peach is like, no, why would you... You, you're, you're not my type. You're like a giant evil lizard man. You. But uh, yeah, and uh, she eventually uh, agrees because uh, uh, Kamek starts uh, torturing Toad and uh, uh, Dark City style. And, uh, you know, Peach gives it. It's like, oh. Okay, uh, maybe you're not that ugly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, um, so she gets captured and is going to marry Bowser. Wow. That is... Wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that happens, and, um, basically, uh, Mario and Donkey Kong, um, they're stuck inside this Unagi with no way out. But wouldn't you know it, they happen to stumble across one of the carts that um, they were riding in, and um, they take the barrel cannon on the back of the Mario Kart, and they ride it out like a barrel can from uh, the Donkey Kong Country Returns games. And, oh my gosh, as someone who loves those games, oh my gosh, that was really cool. Uh, like, I was never that big a fan of... Terrainin. But uh, anyway, I was always a really, well, not a really big fan of uh, those rocket barrel rides levels from uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. But uh, honestly, seeing it in the movie, like I thought that was a really cool little throwback to those levels and wasn't expecting it. So very good inclusion. So they were able to use that to get out of the Unagi and fly back to the Mushroom Kingdom for the final battle. And um, so we kind of see... Um, the beginning of the wedding, like, um, all of, uh, the Koopas and Goombas are going to the wedding, and you see, like, Peach getting ready, and Toad gives her a bouquet of flowers, it's like, oh, wow, this is really happening, Mario Odyssey style, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, pretty fun, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was pretty different from Mario Odyssey, honestly, like, I don't know, it just had very different vibes to it, but still, I, it was very uh, interesting, and uh, very unique, and so you kind of see, um, it was funny because uh, <laughs> um, in the little place where they were getting married, like, you could see, like, King Boo and King Babam showing up, I'm just like, oh, wow, they're in the movie, That that that's really cool, I, I wasn't expecting them, and uh, King Boo, like, Man, I I didn't get a good look at him, but man, his his eyebrows were weird looking. He he just looked really off. But uh, that's all I've got to say about that. I mean, cool, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, so that was pretty great. I really enjoyed seeing all the those characters appear in this scene. And yeah, so um, Peach goes up to the altar, and Bowser's like, oh. Please, please marry me. And uh, Kamek is uh, the one officiating the wedding, because of, of course. Um, and um, Peach is like, huh? Fooled you. You really thought I was going to marry some big, ugly, stupid turtle? And then, of course, Bowser gets angry. He starts throwing a fit. But wouldn't you know it? Hidden in the bouquet of flowers is an ice flower. And Peach uses it to freeze Bowser and, and save the day. And um, Bowser is going to... Uh, um, sacrifice all of uh, the prisoners, so like Luigi and all the cons and the penguins, and he was going to sacrifice everybody in a pool of lava uh, in honor of Peach, and like, how romantic, you know? How, how, how romantic? But, uh, yeah, that was a... Uh, that was a uh, bit, bit dark. Um, wasn't expecting that, but, you know, she uh, stops everyone from going in the lava, and wouldn't you know it, everybody saved. And uh, Mario and Donkey Kong show up, and there's this whole montage of them, like, going through uh, Toad Town and, like, destroying all the Koopas and the Goombas, and Donkey Kong gets uh, the Fire Flower, and it's Fire Donkey Kong, and Mario gets big, and oh, 
just another really good uh, little fight scene there. And man, what did I eat? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a really great scene. Really loved that part, and yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty satisfied with how that went. But uh, yeah, um, so that's about how that went. And honestly, like, there, I mean, it was kind of the end of the battle, or, well, not the end of the battle, but it was the end of that scene. I'm trying to uh, remember everything, because there was a lot that happened at this part, so I'm trying to make sure I, uh, kind of, uh, try to remember everything. But, uh, basically, Mario and Donkey Kong show up, uh, wouldn't you know what, Bowser's frozen, and they save the day, and everybody's happy, but, uh-oh, Bowser gets out, and he is angry but uh yeah so he gets out and starts uh wrecking havoc he starts breathing fire and um well he uh tells uh his troops to uh launch a giant banzai bill to uh basically destroy the uh entire mushroom kingdom yeah that's right he's just about to nuke the whole kingdom because he didn't get the girl he wanted yikes and, I mean, that, that, that part was uh, pretty surprising. I didn't think he was going to go, like, full-on dictator there. But, <laughs> yeah, he kind of did. And uh, so, you, what, do you, what do you know? It's up to Mario to save the day and uh, stop the Banzai Bill from uh, destroying the Mushroom Kingdom. And it was really interesting because the way he did it was he had a Tanuki suit. Or, not Tanuki, a uh, raccoon suit. And... He flew and um, just like poked the Banzai Bill's eye, and that was enough to make it stop. Like it was, it was kind of weird. That, that part was weird to me. Like, like the Banzai are, are like the Bullet Bills and Banzai Bills are they like alive? Like I don't know. Like yeah, they have eyes and arms, but like they're also bullets that like I don't know. Like that was, that was something I never really thought of. And like in the movie, they were kind of like treated as like not alive, but then Mario poked the eye of the Banzai Bill and all of a sudden, like, it became alive and, like, started chasing him instead of hitting the ground. It was just like, what? Like, where is the line of sentience drawn in this universe? Like, obviously, there's, like, talking mushrooms and stuff, so, like, obviously, like, there's, like, no realism whatsoever, but, like, where is the line drawn? Where where do things become acceptable and not acceptable? But I don't know that that that, that was just kind of weird to me. But anyway, uh, Mario um, chases the Banzai Bill away, and wouldn't you know it, it just so happens to run into the warp pipe that the Mario originally fell in that leads right to Brooklyn, and everyone and everything just kind of gets stuck inside the warp pipe because logic. And, yeah, so that kind of happens, and Bowser's whole castle and all the characters, they get sucked into the warp pipe, and all of a sudden, now they're in Brooklyn, and everybody in Brooklyn is freaking out, and it was kind of surreal to see um, all of the characters, like, walking around Brooklyn. Like, that was something I did not expect, like, did not think that they were going to uh, just... Like, they were going to have the, the main battle between Mario and Luigi and Bowser in the streets of Brooklyn. Like, that, that was pretty uh, pretty unexpected. But, um, I mean, it works. And I... I that, that's all I got to say. But, yes, that it was, it, was, it was a good time. And, um... So, they everyone gets sucked in. And this is the part where uh, Mario and Luigi and Bowser kind of face off. And uh, Mario kind of, like, has this moment where he's like, Oh, man, can I really uh, do this? And then, like, he uh, thinks about his brother Luigi. And he's like, oh, yeah, we, we, we can do this. Let's go. Let's go defeat the giant turtle. Yahoo! And uh, so he kind of uh, gives himself a little pep talk. And what do you know? He grabs the superstar and Mario and Luigi go Super Saiyan on Bowser and like beat him to a pulse and yeah they they, they, they were pretty rough on him like they they really they really shook him up like I, I they were like punch him in the jaw and like 
drop kicking him like 20 feet. I'm like, well, geez. It, it was a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. Like, that was one of the things I was most excited for. I'm like, how are they going to handle the final battle? Like, obviously, he's not going to just, like, touch an axe and he's going to fall in the lava or... Hopefully not, but... They, they, they really, uh... They really did a good job with that aspect, and I was really happy with the final battle. Um... Because um, it was just really well animated, it was just a really well um, sequenced scene, and uh, you see Foreman Spike uh, just like getting beaten by Koopa Troopas, and Luigi has to save him, and all of a sudden Foreman Spike looks like the idiot, and I'm like, oh, yeah. But uh, so that happens, and eventually um, Bowser gets defeated, and. Um, they use the mini mushroom on him. He shrunk down to a tiny size. They put him in a jar, and he is he is powerless. So, yeah, that that happens, and that's pretty much the end. Well, not the end. There, there's a few more scenes. Um, you uh, kind of see that uh, Mario and Luigi kind of are happier of who they are now because in the beginning of the movie they were like kind of lacking confidence a little bit, and they were like, oh. We're just plumbers. That sucks. But now they're like, oh, we're the heroes we always wanted to be. Yahoo! <laughs> and uh, that, that's kind of how the movie ends. Like, you see them living in the Mushroom Kingdom now, and I guess it kind of, like, um, sets up for, uh, I guess, the games where it's like, oh, that's how their rivalry started, and that's how um, all the games, like, that's how... Uh, everything happens in the games, like, it was just kind of setting up for that, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. And, um... Yeah, that's pretty much the whole movie, and... Pretty good! Pretty good! There actually were a cut... There were two post-credit cut... Uh, not cutscenes. Scenes where, uh... Um, that were pretty cool. The first one was, uh, Bowser singing because Bowser has a musical side to him and you I I never wanted to hear Bowser sing but after hearing him sing I I want him to sing more I never want him to stop please Bowser keep singing keep singing but yeah that was the first scene where you see Bowser sitting in his cage all tiny playing on a tiny piano and he's like well and, <laughs> um, so, yeah, Bowser is, uh, imprisoned in Peach's Castle. Probably not forever. There's probably gonna be a sequel where he gets out and causes more terror, but, uh, that happens. And, um, the, the last one, where this is... I don't know if you want to... I mean, it, it is a spoiler. I don't know how big of a spoiler it is. But, um, so, be warned. Um... So, uh, there is, it's kind of like, uh, like an abandoned warehouse, and, like, in the, in, like, the back, you can see, like, a Yoshi egg about to hatch, and, um, you don't see Yoshi at all, but you can, like, like, it's, it's, it's showing a Yoshi egg about to hatch, and that was, like, I guess the teaser for what they're working on next, which could either, A, be a sequel to the Mario movie that, that, uh, features Yoshi a lot more, or two, like, just a brand new movie that is just going to be about Yoshi. I think both of those are pretty likely. I don't know which one's going to be, but it was kind of teasing that whatever they're doing next, Yoshi was going to play a big part in it. But it was kind of weird because Yoshis were already kind of shown off in this movie. Like, there was a scene during their journey where they passed, like, a bunch of Yoshis, like, running in the wild. It was like, okay, but we already saw Yoshis already in this movie, so seeing one about to hatch as a teaser for the next one was kind of like... Okay. I mean, like, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take anything. Like, I'm glad there was something teasing another movie, but... Eh, I I think I would have appreciated something like, oh, Wario and Waluigi. It's like, Danny DeVito is Wario and Jim Carrey is Waluigi. We're, we're gonna be the bad guys in the next movie. Wah! Like, I was kind of hoping for something like that. Actually, no. No, even better than that. I was really hoping that since we got freaking Luma in the movie, that Rosalina would show up and there would be a Mario Galaxy movie coming next. Oh my gosh, could you imagine that? Oh! <sighs> That'll never happen. 
It, probably not at least, but uh, honestly, even if it's just a movie about Yoshi, I will take that. Honestly, from I, I could, I could assume that Nintendo wants to make more uh, movies based on their based on Mario and just their other series in general, and I, I really hope that they do make more movies soon, because oh my gosh, this movie was incredible! I loved it! It was, it was great. It was very, very good, and I loved it. Um, yes. So, so much yes. And, yeah, that, that's pretty much the whole movie. I mean, I kind of went over most of the scenes. There were a couple that I missed that weren't really as important, but um, that was pretty much the whole movie. And, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a great story. The characters were all written great. Um, there's a few more things I want to talk about real quick. First of all, the voice acting. I gotta be honest, it was really good. Like, there wasn't a single character where I was like, oh, that, that, that's disappointing. Like, I thought every... Um, voice actor did a really good job. Like, I know we were all really scared of Chris Pratt being Mario in the beginning because he sounded nothing like Mario. But, oh my gosh, he he actually did a really good job. Like, honestly, I forgot that Chris Pratt was even Mario. Like, like he, he sounded... Like, he didn't really sound like Mario, but he didn't really sound like Chris Pratt either. It was like... It was pretty perfect, honestly. Like, I was very happy with his performance. Charlie Day did amazing. Uh, Anna Taylor Joyce did amazing. Jack Black. Oh, I think he was my favorite. Oh my gosh. The part where he was singing the, the okay, there was a part where he sang a song about peaches and like falling in love with peach and oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Like he is like the best Bowser voice we have ever had and it was it was literally perfect. I am so happy and he did a great job. Um and all the other voice actors did a really great job, too. There wasn't a single one where I was like, eh, could have been better. It was, it was great. And I know as sad as we all were to see Charles Martinet not be Mario, um, it was still really great. And actually, I know Charles Martinet did some voices in the movie. I don't know which characters he did. I think he may have done the Mario's dad, I think is what he is what who he played i don't quote me on that but i think he was mario's dad maybe i don't know i, I don't really remember his voice i wasn't paying attention that much while i was watching I'd, I'd have to hear his voice again to really know but i do know that he was credited in the movie so he did it he, he he was he was someone in the movie and like i said like there wasn't a single bad voice so he, he did a terrific job too so um good job to him and yeah, like, as far as the animation goes, oh my gosh, like, there was never a second where I was doubting the animation would be um, anything but perfect, but they did a really spectacular job. Great job, Illumination, you did a fantastic job, I really love the animation. Illumination has always been one of my favorite uh, animation companies, um, I mean, I'm not, like, a diehard Minions fan or whatever, like... I haven't seen all their stuff, but, like, in terms of quality, they are definitely one of the best animation companies in the world, and I think that they were definitely the best choice to be the ones in charge of a Mario movie. They did a great job. And in terms of story, like I said, amazing, amazing story. It was great. It, it was so creative. It was just amazing. I loved it, and I'm so happy that everything went the way it did and I mean it was more than your typical um just oh we gotta save peach story like that gets kind of old but this this was really great i'm really happy with how this turned out and honestly the story was really great there, there, there was just so many little details in the story i was just like oh yes please keep doing that and yeah um in terms of the music oh my gosh the music was great like I talked about the DK rap already, but on top of some fantastic re remixes of like the Super Mario Bros. Free, the Super Mario Bros. theme, uh, the Underground theme, uh, the Super Mario Bros. Free theme, um, just everything. It was just all oh, so good. And another thing that really shocked me was just how much like non Mario music there was in the movie. Like, 
Um, they played uh, No Sleep Till Brooklyn by the Beastie Boys. They played, um, gosh, what is that song called? Uh, Take On Me um, by AHA. And uh, there was uh, I Need a Hero and like a couple other songs where it's just like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Like, I know people were memeing like, oh, there's going to be a bunch of uh, really stupid songs in the movie. Like, there, there really weren't. Like, as strange as it was to hear, like, real music wi- in a Mario movie, like, it, it honestly fit in pretty well. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it, it fit in, and I'm not complaining. So, definitely really happy with the music. Like, all the remixes were amazing, and like, oh, gosh. Oh, so good. And, um, I mean, yeah, that's about pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today, so, um, overall, just final thoughts, it was an amazing movie, and the big question, was it better than the 1993 movie? And the answer is, yes, absolutely yes, like, oh my gosh, I would see this movie again and again and again, like, I would, I would see it in the theater, like, ten times, like, it was definitely up there is like one of the probably the best video game adaptation I've ever seen like it was perfect Uh, like I mean it was just uh. listen if you are on the fence about seeing this movie please go see it please support the movie it was amazing and I know I clearly have a lot of bias. Like, obviously, I'm a Mario content creator. I've grown up with Mario my whole life. Obviously, I'm going to love it no matter what. But please, like, just go see this movie. Like, it is amazing. And if you've already seen it, go see it a second time or a third time or a fourth time because it is really that great. And I enjoyed every second of it. All the Easter eggs, the music, the story, the characters, the voice acting. It was all so incredible. And honestly, it was the perfect Super Mario Brothers movie. But it didn't have Waluigi in it, so... Boo!